Hello everybody, this is uh, Tim Watkins. I'm the Transportation Director uh, here for Gordon County Schools. I kind of wanted to go over uh, a brief little PowerPoint presentation here for you to kind of give you guys an idea of uh, some of the things and some of the variables that go into place uh, whenever you're budgeting for a school, uh, a field trip or an extracurricular trip uh, for your students. So I'm going to go through some um, some slides here just kind of explaining some of the things uh, that you need to consider and uh, when you're estimating and coming up with the cost uh, of bus usage for a trip. So uh, things to factor in, there are several variables when it comes to budgeting for a trip. Um, what account you'll be using, um, so what account will be invoiced uh, for this trip. Through Trip Tracker, um, we'll go through some videos, an additional video that'll show you guys how to put in a trip request in Trip Tracker. And there's a link there on our school uh, system website to Trip Tracker. Uh, but that's where you'll put in your trip request. And through that same software program, we invoice your uh, team or your or program um, or your class for. Um, um, for that trip. So whatever the cost uh, is uh, for the bus usage, we invoice that. So one of the big factors you need to consider is who's paying for this trip. What account will it come out of? We'll go over that more in detail in one of the, of the future slides. Distance to and from the event location uh, and any detours or stops along the way. That's something that factors in. How many buses are going to be needed? Um, the driver cost. How much is it going to cost to pay the driver for their time? What time? What type of buses will we will be needing? Okay, so just uh, there's all different types of buses out there. We'll go over that more in detail in just a minute. Um, what time are you departing and returning? And is it an overnight out of state or over a hundred miles one way? So those are some big factors to look at when you're coming up with or deciding on your uh, extracurricular trip. So the first big thing here is who's paying? Uh, is this trip a bo uh, board of education paid trip? Most of the time, these are only uh, GHSA um, games and competitions and some pre-approved CTA competitions. So any game that's on your schedule that's a GHSA uh, game that goes against your record, that was, those are the types of things that are most of the time a board um, paid. Um, if it's like a scrimmage game or fun team building trip or like a conference or something like that, those are mostly student paid or they're paid by through your booster or your internal count there uh, at the school level um, with your bookkeepers. So is this trip going to be a booster paid club, a student paid, or a, a school internal account paid trip? So those are kind of things you got to factor in there when you're going into trip tracker and scheduling your trip. Um, what account am I going to use? What account's going to be invoiced for that particular trip? Distance and price, you must calculate your distance from the departure address to the event location address. Um, you will then need to double that number to produce the overall estimated mileage total. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you have any other stops, maybe to and from the hotel to the conference or the event uh, address, factor those in, how many times you're gonna go back and forth uh, from those locations uh, throughout each day, if it's a multiple day trip. Um, so you'll need to add those mileages in as well. So our trip tracker software that we use that we'll be going over uh, in more detail in the next video, it kind of goes, uh, it uses Google Maps software to calculate. So using Google Maps when estimating your mileage is probably your most accurate option when estimating the mileage for those trips. Um, so you can go into Google Maps, go in there, you can punch in driving directions and you can add multiple stops on there so you can kind of calculate all your stops along the way if there's a particular restaurant or um, something like that that you want to stop on along the way you can do that add that into your trip total so you need to make sure you do that for each bus if you're taking multiple buses all these numbers you know if you're taking two buses all this mileage needs to be doubled if you're taking three buses you need to make sure you triple these numbers to cover the distance of all the buses that will be going on the trip so the price per mile is currently a dollar twenty per mile per bus um, right now we've tried not to change that with the rising fuel costs and stuff like that um, but there may be a change in the future with that I'm not real sure if, if what we're doing right now dollar twenty is sustainable if gas prices continue to creep up higher but for right now 
the price per mile is currently a dollar twenty per mile. Um, and like I said, just check back periodically before you schedule those trips in the future and just make sure these slides and this information um, stays the same and those numbers don't change. We will tend to send out an email to everybody in the future if those numbers go up. Driver cost. Every trip is charged a three hour minimum for the driver. So the driver gets paid a three hour minimum, whether it takes an hour, hour and a half, they get a three hour minimum. The cost for the first three hours is $14 per hour. That covers the driver's uh, pay and it covers their taxes and all the other benefits that come out of that as well. After the first three hours, the price drops to $10 per hour. After the first eight hours, the driver uh, makes overtime at a rate of a time and a half by $10 an hour, which it goes to $15 per hour after the first eight hours once they reach overtime. If it's an overnight trip, you are required to provide the driver with a hotel room, just like you would your players or your students or anything like that, or your other teachers or coaches. If the driver is away during meal times, you are required to provide meals. So if they're gone all day and you provide lunch for your students and all that kind of stuff, just make sure you're including your drivers in on that. And if you know if it's overnight trip, you're gone in the evening times for dinner, those types of things too. Um, <clears throat> keep in mind most restaurants, especially fast food restaurants, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, all that kind of stuff, if you go in and say, hey, you know, I've got all these kids and then I've got a driver. A lot of times this restaurant will pay the driver. They'll cover the driver's cost for you uh, and help pay for that driver's food. Because you're, you're, keep in mind, you're bringing in, you know, sometimes 20, 30, 40 uh, customers in at one time. And they usually tend to pitch in and, and cover that driver's meal. So how many buses are needed? Most conventional buses have 24 seats. Uh, and they're rated for 72 passengers, but guys, that is three students per seat. Uh, if you've got big, you know, high school students and things like that, we know that's going to be an uncomfortable ride. That's going to be a really tight squeeze for three per seat. So, but they will seat 48 high school kids comfortably, two to a seat. So just keep in mind that if you're if you're scheduling for pre-k elementary early element early childhood you know education you know kindergarten up to possibly even fourth third or fourth grade you can you can squeeze three to a seat you know pretty comfortably uh if you're going short distances or something like that so that's up to you how you want to do that but like i said you know three to a seat they'll seat 72 two to a seat they'll seat 48 comfortably uh, make sure you account for luggage coolers and equipment back doors aisles and emergency exits cannot be blocked and everything must be secured okay so just make sure if you're carrying coolers anything like that we you, they're you know they're enough that they can sit in the seat um those types of things they're not blocking the aisle um and things like that so if you have any questions about that beforehand, you know, send us a picture, send us something, an email, touch base with us, and we'll kind of try to help make accommodations as much as we can to accommodate some of your special needs uh, as far as that goes when it comes to equipment. I know color guards have their flags and, and things like that. So, you know, every, every program is a little bit different in their needs. So but make sure, like I said, you touch base with us beforehand, and we'll try to make sure that we accommodate all those needs. What type of bus will you need? Any type of special equipment needs, wheelchair lift, seat belt, safety vest. Um, so, you know, if you need a special needs bus, there's a note area there, you know, and, uh, and uh, an area that you can click on in Trip Tracker where you request those types of things. Um, is a pair of pro or a monitor needed for one or more of your students? So that's another thing that has to factor in. Microbus uh, for 14 passengers and below. So we have the option there to use microbuses. They're a smaller bus. They seat 14 and below. Uh, and then some of our drivers, uh, some of our coaches and staff members throughout the system, some of them are only microbus certified. So they can only drive microbuses. So they don't have their CDLs, but they've went through the proper safety training and all that kind of stuff uh, and go through our annual training. So they are able to drive a microbus. So that's another option there if you if that's a, something you want to uh, use instead of a big conventional bus. So once again, that's just things that you can contact us about. We'll let you know, hey, if that's going to fit your, your needs or not, and if those micro buses are available because they're in limited number. We don't have a whole lot of those. <clears throat> Who will be driving the bus? 
All right. So our coaches, we have a lot of coaches and fa faculty and staff members who have their CDLs. They're they're, they're certified bus drivers. Uh, sometimes a lot of our teachers want to utilize those coaches and, t and things, or they may want to drive their own trip. So coaches get paid a base of three hours for any trip they drive that they receive a stipend to coach. So if I'm an assistant baseball coach or an assistant football coach and I receive a stipend to, tr to coach that team, I can drive to my away games and I get paid three hours. That's it, just three hours. So um, don't get, can't go over that, just three hours. That covers the trip there, that covers the trip back. That doesn't really, you know, cover your time while you're there coaching, so that keeps, it keeps our coaches from pretty much double dipping and all that kind of stuff. So if the coach uh, or the staff member is driving for a different team other than their own or volunteers to coach and does not receive a stipend for that team, they will be paid for each hour as a normal driver would. So if you want to go out and get another coach and say, hey, do you care to drive my team and those types of things, and th that's perfectly fine. They'll get paid the entire time that they're gone. All right. Just like a normal coach would, the same things go into effect. Just like you were having a normal driver, you would pay for their hotel room, you would pay for their meals, you would accommodate them the same way you would a normal driver if that coach drives that and they do not receive a stipend. Uh, is, the, if the driver, uh, is the driver certified to drive a micro bus or a conventional CDL bus? So that's another thing. You know, when you're asking, hey, can, what, what kind of bus can you drive? You know, what are you just a micro bus driver or do you have your CDLs? Can you drive any of the bus in the fleet? So when you're asking other coaches and all, all those types of things, um, those are things to keep in mind. Departure and return times. Keep in mind that bus routes take priority over any extracurricular trips, okay? Um, whether it be a sporting event in the afternoon, whether it be a field trip during the day, conventions, um, things of that nature, our bus routes take priority. Um, we try to accommodate as much as possible. Um, most of the time, we, we were able to accommodate, you know, 99.9% .9 of, the, of the trips that you guys schedule, but we need your help. We don't really have a lot of just dedicated trip drivers. Most of our drivers drive a route in the morning and drive a route in the afternoon. So morning routes usually last from about 6 until about 8.30 in the morning. Um, and again, they have to be at the elementary schools at 2 p.m. and they're out delivering elementary and then middle high up until at least 4.30 in the afternoon. So try, you know, when you're scheduling trips, try to make sure, you know, they fit within those windows, you know, in the middle of the day. They're not leaving until 8.30 and you're trying to get back by 2. Um, and then if, if you got athletic trips or anything like that, try to leave, you know, 4, 4.30 every afternoon. That way we can use and utilize our trip drivers. So keep that in mind when you're scheduling your sporting, uh, your, you know, your, your, I guess your out of region uh, competitions and out of region games and all that kind of stuff, you know, you know, if it's somewhere pretty close and you can kind of push back that uh, start time of that game and stuff like that, um, that, that helps us out a whole lot when we're scheduling that, okay? Scheduling trips and games around these times makes it easier to find drivers. If not, we may have to send out tons of emails like you guys have seen before that say, hey, is anybody interested in driving this sports trip or this game or this field trip? You know, because the times are complicated, we have to do those types of things. So just keep that in mind whenever you're, you know, uh, figuring out uh, when and what time you're going to leave and return. Overnight, out of state, and over 100 miles, okay? This category is going to be one of your categories in Trip Tracker, and we'll go over that more in detail in that slide. But any trips that is overnight, out of state, or over 100 miles one way must be Board of Education approved, okay? It's got to be approved by the BOE at the monthly board meeting. They only meet once a month, okay? Trip tracker requests must be submitted well in advance for these trips. Um, now we will make and we will expedite and make accommodations um, and expedite the approval process for short uh, notice trips that are beyond your control, such as state playoff advancements, games, and all that kind of stuff. You may be in the first, second, or third round. You don't really know what time your next game is and, and where it's going to be and who your next opponent's going to be. So it's really hard to do that. You may go into the second or third round 
It may be over 100, night, uh, 100 miles. You may have to stay overnight. We get that. We understand that. The Board of Education and Central Office understands that. And we'll make accommodations for those types of things. But if it's already on your schedule, if it's uh, an outing or a competition you know months in advance, it's a good idea to go ahead and get those trip request turned in on trip tracker as soon as you can as soon as you find out that way we can get that board of education approval and we don't run into any problems okay so all of that is going to be handled through the trip tracker so once if you have those types of trips you will not use your regular account you would go in and select overnight out of state or over 100 miles in trip tracker and then that would uh automatically change the approval routing in that software and it would go to the board of education and central office for their approval so that's kind of how that works so just keep that in mind so here's a little bit of review so when you're coming up with your estimated total bus cost you're looking at total miles for each bus at a dollar 20 per mile plus the bus driver's hours three hour minimum at fourteen dollars an hour then ten dollars an hour up to the uh from hours three to eight and then time and a half beyond that and then the driver hotel room and driver meals factored into there okay and that pretty much comes up with your estimated total bus cost for your trip so that's just a quick video to kind of go through some things hopefully that helps uh, some of you teachers and faculty and staff and coaches uh, to come up with uh, your estimated trip cost like i said you would take that estimated cost and divide that if it's a student paid trip you would you know charge your, start, your students a certain amount um, for that trip just might make sure you estimate on the high side because sometimes we have you know 40 kids that say they're going and then when it comes down you know time to pay and and, and turn in that money and do that kind of thing you know the uh participation may drop down to 20 students and then all of a sudden your account's going to be short on what you get invoiced for that trip those types of things so I'll always make sure you account for um, some loss there so if you need help with anything guys in the future feel free to call transportation uh, any of us here can help you uh, or you can email brandy evans at gcbe.org she's the one who handles all of our trips and trip tracker and things like that so if you have any questions feel free to contact any of us here at transportation and we'll be glad to help you